So, um, you have to program this computer. That's at least one step in the right direction. It's a nice computer and it has some quirks that makes it very capable. But of course, um, shown in the previous video, you know that this here is programmed in binary, but even I get confused by it sometimes. So instead, I created a website. Um, and on that website, you can basically program the computer in a relatively human language. And that's not even the coolest part. The coolest part is that it actually uh, not just converts everything to binary, but uh, it converts the binary into a QR code. And you can scan the QR code. And then the QR code will lead you to a website where your binary code will be that you can view the binary code whilst entering it on your mobile phone without the need of a second monitor or a computer capable of handling both a browser and a scrap mechanic. Um, my computer barely handles it, but I can't use OBS because it it just can't handle it. Um, so I'm using Windows Game uh, Recorder, which is terrible and I can't uh, record the entire screen, so I have to make cuts. And I hope my editor will work again. Um, anyway, so let's go to that browser right now. So, on my website, codemaker4.github.io, uh, I have a bunch of things, like some videos on my channel that I'm proud of, uh, like the Lognet series, and the computer video, and the video I'm recording now, which I can't show you, because if I would show you, uh, I would destroy the universe because of time travel. So let's not do that. Oh, also, there's a typo here. Um, but anyways, if you go to this link, SMC 2.0 Assistant, you'll be going to this uh, gorgeous page. Um, and I'm actually going to be unzooming a bit here, so everything gets nice and big. I'm actually going to kind of undo that. The resolution of my computer is kind of low. It's not very responsive. I'm sorry for that. Um, anyways, this is a program that I recorded previously, so I'm just going to delete that. So, on the computer, um, let's actually draw this. Oh wait, I can't. Okay, so uh, on the computer, inside of the uh, regular memory of the computer, there's a bunch of addresses that have special functions. Um, you don't really have to know why that is or something. For this, uh, for now, just note that uh, adding two numbers together isn't just one instruction. We need to first uh, put the first number you want to add in the good space in memory. So um, this program actually automatically finds that good space in memory for you. So you can say add to indicate that you're about to use a variable, not a regular number. ALU, which is all about the arithmetic logic unit. And then A, which is the first input, is going to be made equal to, uh, what do we want to add together? 3 and 5? Okay, we're going to add in 3 and 5. So hashtag to state that there is going to be a regular number, not a binary number or some text. And we're going to put a 3 there. So as you can see, it's already generating some binary code. Uh, this here basically says that you need to add uh, edit the address 0, which is where WA is. Um, and this here is just a binary free which needs to be put into there. Now we're going to be need to enter the second number. So at ALU B, which is going to be the second input of the ALU, is going to be set equal to hashtag five. Um, then again, stuff is here is changing. Now at uh, now we're going to output it to the user. So we're going to set at ALU out, uh, output, if I'm correct, is going to be set equal to um, the, actually no, we need to get the user I.O. So, uh, at user I.O. is going to be set equal to um, at ALU out. Okay. Um, no problem. 
So this, uh, uh, these variables are actually just numbers uh, behind the scenes are going to be replaced with the numbers that they represent. If you would load this onto the computer, it's actually not going to be showing value in ALU output. It's going to be showing the address of ALU output, which is not what we want. To make sure that we actually not just take uh, this number that it represents, but actually the value that is stored over there, we put a dollar sign in front of it. Um, and that just tells the computer to not just be lazy, but to actually do some work and stuff. So, um, now we have a binary code over here, and the code is automatically generated a QR code. Um, one sec, this thing here is in the way. Oh. Okay, I hope this will still work. Because I'm not going to be scanning the QR code on my phone. So while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be clicking on the QR code. So this here is what we'll be seeing on my phone soon. Um, and it, for the nerdy people, you see that it's somewhere on my website. There's a thing. And I'm actually giving the program here an hexadecimal through. And so now if I press the uh, next line, it's going to be giving me all the things that I need to write onto the computer nice and handy. So, um, I'm going to be opening this here on my phone to make sure that I can enter it on my computer. So I'm just going to take a QR code scanner. Uh, for those using iOS devices, uh, this should still work, of course, but you have an already a QR code scanner in your default camera app. Uh, cheap Android users don't have that. Okay. Um, uh, the re recording thing is actually... Uh, disrupting the QR code so it won't work. Okay, now it's working. So I just scanned the QR code, and now on my phone, I'm seeing this. Which is great, that means everything is working. But now we can start entering this code into the computer. Okay, so now we're back in Scrap Mechanic. Um, so I do still have the app on my phone. And uh, you, you could, of course, have scanned the QR code on the video or just programmed it yourself. This is a bit of a follow along tutorial. So, actually, you're actually supposed to go to the website yourself and uh, enter the same code I entered and try to do the exact same things I'm doing here. Um, so, the first, so my app on my phone is telling me that the uh, first line of code, let me just quickly find an empty inventory. So that's it, don't have to block pointer. Okay, great. So, uh, my phone is telling me that if, uh, when you write the code in memory, you're going to be uh, not just starting over here, but actually need to start over here on this purple line. So, not this one, but the first purple line uh, from which uh, there's no more lack of switches, uh, which is address 16. Um, and my app is telling me that the first line is going to be all zeros. So we're going to press next line, and go to next line. Ooh, and now I actually need to write some ones in here. Interesting, interesting. And now comes a one. I'm just pressing next line again. So the blue lines are the odd lines, so make sure that you... So line three is on the blue line, and line one is on the blue line. Let's go to line number four, and enter that into the computer. Line number 05, which is odd, so it's going to be a blue line. And now it's going back to line 0, which means that we've finished entering the code. Okay, um, so just do that. I pause the video now. Okay, now you're done doing that, if everything is correct. Uh, to launch, actually start this program, we're going to be uh, turning on this white gate here. Um, because I actually need to partially mimic some task the computer would do and use the spot gun to shoot this white button. It must be a one tick pulse. If it isn't a one tick pulse it will probably break the computer. So just uh, pause now and do that. Great you're back. So if everything is correct the computer is now set up to start the program. The only thing you have to do is to press the button. Okay, uh, it 
actually finish it, I'm gonna stop the computer. Um, and the result is over here, but it's a binary 8. If you got something different, uh, make sure to try again, follow the instructions closely, or otherwise ask your, uh, give some screenshots and ask your question in the Discord server. Uh, please add screenshots or a video, uh, otherwise people can't help you. Okay, so this program is nice and simple, but as you notice the computer would actually continue on afterwards. Um, let's actually quickly fix that, because there's a way to turn the computer off. Okay, so um, we are back to this code that we've written, and it works, which is great. So let's go over what the computer is doing again. So first it's uh, remembering that it needs to add 3, and then it's remembering that it needs to add 5, and then it's going to be, it, it will automatically calculate that. So now what to do is we um, take the value found at the address where the output is stored, and we put that into the user I.O. So, um, but what we want to do is we want to, to make it after this pass. And to do this, we need to do something weird, which is one of the parts of my computer. We're going to say ALU mode. Um, which is the mode the ALU is in, also has some other settings for the computer. But we're going to set it to a very specific value. Um, I don't actually know the decimal version of this, so I'm going to enter it in binary using a percentage sign. If you don't know how to type this, just use Shift on 5. This may be different for our keyboards. You, you can also just copy paste it from somewhere else, maybe. So now to this, we're going to enter a binary code. It's going to be three zeros, one, and then four zeros. So what we're doing here is we're going to changing um, the bytes at address ALU mode to this specific value, because uh, this setting here is to pass the computer. Uh, when the setting here is on, the computer will be passed. Um, I'm not going to be over going over what the other uh, bits mean yet, because that's something for later on. So, now again, we are going to be um, scanning this code, and while I do that, you can be passing this video and enter this code yourself into the computer. Oh, and make sure that while you actually scan your code, um, that there's no like bar isn't here. So just quickly move your mouse out of the way, and the scanning should go better. Great! Okay, so now you should have already entered your code, uh, and you should have scanned the QR code to see this on your mobile phone. Okay, so now we're going to be entering that code into the computer. What we are going to be doing for that is we are again going to be uh, using our phone as a cheat sheet, and make sure that for each line we're going to uh, go to the next line on the computer and press next line on the phone. So as you may notice, is that the first code is actually going to be the same, uh, because these are still the same instructions. So make sure that you go to uh, line 5, which is, uh, this is line 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Which, is, which used to be our last line of the code, and now there's going to be new code. And the code is over here, this one here, and this line over here. Okay, so now use your phone to actually enter this on the computer. And when you're done doing that, to actually pass the computer, put this into the, pass the video, put this into the computer using your phone, and when you're back, we're going to be trying out this new program. You're back! Great! So, um, to actually run the program, we again need to actually jump to the beginning. So just make sure that this uh, white button is firmly shot with a one tick pulse. And now I'm going to press the start button and hope for the best. So as you can see, the computer actually turned itself off, indicated by the sound and the red gate being on again. Uh, so now try this out for yourself, and pause the video here. Okay, so now that you've tried that out, if it didn't work, 
um, as in the computer didn't pass again, uh, post some screenshot of your computer on the the program you wrote on the uh, uh, values in memory over here and go to my Discord server and ask your questions. Now we're going to be back to the program editor because we're going to be making this code interactive as in we can actually enter our own values to add together. Okay, so a user I/O when it's on the left side of the equal sign, it's actually going to be writing to the user output. But it can also it's user I/O stands for user, as in human, input and output. But it can't just output; it can also send an input, right? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, putting this here. On this side, and of course, add a dollar sign because you don't just want to read the number user IO but the value at user IO. Um, well, this here won't work very well, um, and that's because your base the computer is going to be reading the same value twice after the chart, but you need to give the user some time to actually edit it. So, since the computer doesn't actually restart when you turn it on again, we can actually go to ALU mode and copy this line and paste it over uh, just before each time we take the input. So first the computer is going to be passed for the f so that the user can actually enter the first code. Then we pass the computer again. Then we take the second code and uh, save it. Uh, calculate the output and put it into the output and then stop the computer. So again, uh, get your QR code scanner out and scan the QR code, make sure that your mouse is not on the QR code, great, click browse website, and on your phone you see something like this, pause the video now and do that. Okay, so now that you're done doing that, we are going to be um, going back to Scrap Mechanic and enter this code into the computer. Okay, so we're now back inside of Scrap Mechanic. Now we're going to be going into the computer and we're going to be using our phone to enter the code. So I'm going to quickly do this and make sure that you do this too with your phone. Make sure to press the next line after each time you've entered some code. Remember, when it's an odd number, it's going to be on a blue uh, set of switches. And when it's an even number, it's going to be on a uh, purple and dark blue set of switches. Okay, so now that you've written those 11 lines of code on your computer, uh, should have reached until somewhere around here with your code. Uh, of course, uh, also remember that these uh, lines completely on the left also need to be edited sometimes. So remember to look at those. I'm just going to quickly check if I actually edited that correctly. I believe I did. Yeah, it seems like it. Okay, I did everything right. Likely. Okay, so now I need to jump back to the beginning. So again, uh, it should still be that this only this white switches on and just press this button. But now press start. The computer did not what I expect it to do. And that's because of this error. I entered something incorrectly. So again, don't feel ashamed if you accidentally entered something incorrectly. Uh, I do that sometimes too, which is proven here. I'm just going to be rechecking the rest of my code. That thinks it's all fine. So if it goes wrong, just jump back to the beginning. Make sure that it's still only this 
uh, white switch that's turned on while you do that, and now press start again. Okay, so the computer should turn itself off immediately. So now we can actually use the buttons to enter some code. So let's add... Um, what about 4 and 5? So first we're going to add a binary 4 in here. So as you can see, it actually wrote the binary 4 uh, on uh, this address, which is the first AOU input. And now I'm going to give it a 5. So this is the binary 5. So it wrote that into memory, and now it gives us the output, which is a binary 9. You can easily read that, because this is a 1, a not plus a 2, not plus a 4, and plus a 8. A 1 and 8 is 9. Um, so, now we can actually create a simple calculator in the computer. So, uh, what I now want to do is, uh, when the program is ended, now I've, uh, it has given me the result, I don't just want it to, um, to go, to just stop, I want it to go back to the beginning, so I can maybe ask it for a new uh, addition. So, over here we're just stopping the computer, but we actually don't need that. We can make the computer go back to the beginning. To do that, we are going to be using the, a new variable called addJump. And we want it to jump to a specific line of code, like line 16. So to do that, we're going to type a hashtag to indicate that we're going to be giving a, a, a human number, and then 16. So now it's going to be, uh, so when it reaches this line, instead of just continuing on and executing the code of nothingness, it is going to be uh, going back to this line of code and again stop the computer to ask for a new input. And do that twice for the second input and then give me the output and jump back to the beginning. This is a infinite loop, that's exactly what we want, because we want to be able to enter an infinite amount of uh, additions. So now program this into your uh, website and scan the QR code. And pass the video and when you're done you should see this on your phone. You should be seeing this on your phone right now. Okay, so this here is the code that we need to enter into the computer. So let's enter that into the computer. Okay, so uh, to prevent confusion, so I'm actually going to be resetting all of the memory into the computer. Uh, this here can be easily done by uh, putting the computer on the lift, because this resets all the memory. This might not be true in future versions of Scrap Mechanic. Um, it might be. I mean, this is honestly the only use for that mechanic to quickly reset something. People have been asking for logic gates on switches to actually save their state properly for ages, and I would actually also like that. But for now, it's it's a nice, let's just use the game mechanic for something else. Okay, so now that the computer is reset, we can actually uh, program it without getting confused that easy. So, I'm going to be entering the code on my computer, that's on my phone, into the computer. Um, and you should do that too, so pause the video, and when you're done, press play again. Okay, so now that you've entered all the code into the, your computer, we are actually first jumping back to the beginning of the code, because otherwise the computer will actually... Uh, interpret all this weird memory here as code, which will lead to all kinds of problems. And now we're gonna press start and hope for the best. Okay, so now we need like two numbers we can add together. So I'm going to be looking at my recording, and it's saying about two minutes and like 30 seconds, but 30 is a bit big, so let's just add two and three together, just for fun. So, uh, a number of two is going to be going in here. And now a number of three. And that's the output we get the five, because of course five and three is, like two and three is five. 
Okay, great. But now, actually, the computer is asking for another input, which is great. Um, so that means that everything is working. So I'm looking at my recording timer again. Let's add a three on the seven. So a three. On a number seven. Uh, what's seven in binary? So it's one, two, four. So this is an eight. So minus one is going to be all of these turned on. So this here should be a seven. Okay, and the output of three and seven is of course. 10 or the 2 plus 8. Okay, so this program is working and it has gone back to the beginning and stopped waiting for me to input. I'm not going to input anything. We are actually going to be um, exploring the ALU mode variable a bit more because, uh, as told in the previous video, this computer has a lot of ALU functions. And we're only going over subtract and add for now. Um, but we'll be adding a subtract function to this computer. Let's quickly do that. So, um, so we want to have the user be able to subtract, but they don't need to be subtracting like all the time. I want the user to be able to specify if he is going to subtract or not. So, what we could do is we could actually. Okay, so first of all, tutorial on the computer, the on the at ALU mode variable. Ooh. Okay, so the ALU mode variable, it's a byte, a full byte, so eight bits. Uh, we already learned that this bit here is to pass the computer. Um, actually, we want to that soon but not now um, so these three bytes over here specify an if condition so only if the condition specified there is true we will be jumping later but that's something we are not going to be covering yet but the first four bytes or the first nibble as it's officially called um, is going to be specifying the type of arithmetical instruction is being put into the ALU output so, um, let's kind of visualize what's going on, not visualize, actually this is just a regular text editor, I can uh, enter anything if I want. Um, so we have like the addresses, so uh, at LUA, oh, and at LUB, and at LU mode, and at LU out. Okay, so what if we have, so let's simulate what the computer is doing. So first it's going to be putting a 3 in the ALU mode, or whatever we put in there. Next we're going to be putting a, a 5 in the ALU B. And the ALU mode was actually just left at, hash, at uh, 0, because of reasons. And because of course that's the mode. I'm, I'm neglecting these bits here for now. We're just going to be focusing on these bits, because... Oh, these bits are actually all about what uh, what the arithmetic construction is. So the mode was zero, which is add all the time. So uh, so each time you edit something like two or three or four or five, the computer is automatically going to be editing this value to be correct. So the very moment I enter something this here, the computer is going to be editing this. It's 5 and 8, let's not do that out of my head. Um, but when we turn on a subtract first, uh, function, it's going to be doing something differently. So the subtract is just 1, so 0 is add, 1 is subtracted, and 2 and up is going to be something different. Um, so when subtract is on, it's actually going to be instantly replacing LU out with 3 minus 1, which is actually going to be minus 2 which will be displayed as, because of overflow, 256 minus 2, which is 254. And so we'll be getting this output, which is of course incorrect, but that's because we're asking it to give a uh, binary value anyway. So let's just quickly change this, so it will be given a 2, because 5 minus 3 is 2. So this is what we want to do. We want to make sure 
that the user can specify if ILU mode is set to 0 or 1. So the easiest way to do it is to make ALU mode just be equal to a user I.O. So first of all, we want, of course, the ALU, the computer to pass, so we want to be doing that. And then we want to add ALU mode to be equal to whatever the user typed. So dollar at user I.O. So now the user could enter a 0 or a 1 in there. The user could also enter other things in there. Uh, including this binary value, uh, which will of course break the computer. Um, but let's not get into protection of the, uh, the computer yet, because that will actually get kind of complicated. So, we are going to be uh, scanning this QR code. Because this here is the code that we want to enter in our computer, right? And just pause the video until you see this on your mobile phone. So if you watch this, you see this on, on your mobile phone currently, which is great. So we'll be going to Scrap Mechanic and actually enter this into the computer. So I reset the computer off camera. So let's just quickly enter it into the computer. You're supposed to do this yourself with your mobile phone and not according to the video. But of course, also it's according to the video if you're that lazy. Um, but you're supposed to have scanned the QR code and actually enter this into the computer. So pause the computer for this video. So I have some time to enter this. Actually, no. Technically, I'm giving you time to enter it because. Well, again, time travel is weird, so let's not get into that. Okay. So, you can see that our code is actually becoming kind of humongous, and it should have reached to about over here. If it didn't reach here, you've done something wrong, make sure that you scan the QR code uh, again and actually like enter the code correctly and uh, if stuff still doesn't work again post some screenshots and put, go to the discord server um, but for now we're just going to be expecting everything to be working perfectly fine believe me it, it it never always works perfectly fine this is actually the second take of this part okay so now we've jumped to the start okay so it's asking us for inputs so, I see that this recording has been taking 1 minute and 59 seconds. So, I'm just gonna enter like 5 and 9. So, this here is a number of 5. Okay, now we're gonna be entering a 9. A 9. Okay, so now it's asking us the RF protocol operation, which is good. So we wanted to just add, so we're going to set it to 0, and 5 plus 9 is going to be equal to... Ooh, that's a nice number. It's so beautiful. Uh, let's just quickly think in my head what's 5 or 9, 5, that's like 14 or something. So here we have a 2, a 4, and the 8. So 2 and 8 together is 10, and the 4 is 14, so that's correct. So the computer can still add correctly, which is nice. Okay, so uh, now let's like subtract two numbers from each other. Let's do like uh, 8 minus 5. So we're going to enter an 8. And we're going to do it minus 5. So now we enter a 5. And we're going to do subtract. So we're actually entering a 1 here to go to arithmetical function 1, which is subtract. So 8 minus 5 is 3, of course. Um, so we have now created a very simple calculator in the computer that can add on subtract. 
but of course we've absolutely we've just scratched the surface this is just a hello world world of this computer um, so now that you know that you know that the computer works at least and you know how to enter somebody else's programs so I'll probably be just getting a, a big and nice program into the computer um, actually there's already some uh, preview programs on a website let me quickly show that okay so on the website it should it should look like something like uh, this since you have some uh, line numbers over here on some your code which is written over here uh, fun fact if I actually refresh the page the code will still be there because it saves in your browser if you want to save multiple files uh, you can just copy paste it into your favorite text editor on your computer and save it so here we have the binary code that we entered into the computer and here we have it converted into a QR code which you can click on you can see uh, what the code is or you can just scan the QR code and go to the computer but I also have some uh, settings over here so here's where the line starts that's important for later on when we are going to be declaring our, our own variables because yes you can make your own versions of these uh, but for now this can be uh, this program here is a small tiny counter um, this program here is this is again this is a tiny OS and it is a big OS uh, with this program you can actually program the computer from the user I.O. which we've been using to like enter uh, numbers into the computer. So uh, again, just go to codemaker4.github.io and then click on the SMC assistant link and you'll be going to be you'll be going to this page and just press one of these buttons to get some of nice uh, things. Let's start with actually just going to the counter and scan that see if everything is working or not anyways uh, i'm code maker 4 uh, i hope this video was not very trashy um, i hope that the video editing is going to be going very well it might not be um, also i needed to use a video editor the sound got offset and i really really hope that it won't happen again anyways i'm code maker 4 Watch some other videos, maybe watch some more advanced tutorials that I'll be uploading soon about the more advanced parts in the computer. Go to the Discord server for all your questions or if you've created something nice in Scrap Mechanic that you want to share. There's a very nice com community over there. Uh, bye.